Hey there, comic book community. My name is Joe, and you're watching 360 Comics. Over the weekend, I was super busy with some other stuff, but I found time to do some comic book hunting along the way. I was able to make two stops, one of them at an LCS that had a 50% off sale, and the other one at a flea market that I had never been to before. I picked up some great stuff spanning from the Silver Age to the present day that I'm going to show you now. We are less than 50 subscribers away from our goal of 2000, at which point we're giving away this book right here, Secret Wars number one. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up for a like, and leave a comment down below. You can check out our other videos from the months of May, June, and July. Like those videos and leave comments on them for additional entries. Good luck. My first stop this weekend was at Phantasm Comics, which is located in New Hope, Pennsylvania. And actually, I didn't go to the main location. I went to their warehouse store, which is about 15 minutes away, and it is full of dollar bins. Love hunting through that stuff, as you know, if you've watched this channel before, and I found some great stuff. In addition to that, they had a 50% off sale, so all those dollar bin books were only 50 cents a piece. I only spent about $20, but I get a really nice stack of books, including this first one right here x-men number 11 classic jim lee cover in fact the last cover he did on this x-men run before leaving i think this is probably when he left marvel to form image but you know it's just such a classic cover featuring wolverine in the foreground and some other x-men in the background and uh speaking of that same run we've got this right here x-men number 24 this classic cover once again featuring gambit and rogue Awesome stuff. Always pick this up when I see it real cheap. And th both these books, really nice shape finding them uh, even without bags and boards in the dollar bin. Uh, then there we got Wolverine Origin number two. This, in my opinion, is the best cover out of this original origin run from 2002. Um, love the claws, like, you know, seemingly popping out, you know, out of the uh, the skin right there. Really, really great cover. And uh, this run, in my opinion, underrated still. Like, um, there's a, you can get the, the entire run for like 25, 30 bucks. Um, maybe even cheaper than that if you get like reader copies, but, uh, you know, definitely great artwork and great storyline. Then we've got New Mutants number three from the 2000, I want to say this is like 2002, 2003 run, early 2000s run. This has a couple different first appearances in it, but the thing that really stood out to me about this book was it's a newsstand. And from this era, from the, the 2000s, newsstand copies were really, really rare. In fact, probably one to two percent of the print run at max um i actually looked for this specific book on uh ebay and stuff ha there has not been a newsstand copy that has been posted or sold in quite a while in fact there were none on there um that i could really do a, a, a comp for this book normally is about 10 12 dollars but uh you know being a newsstand it's definitely going to be more rare uh next up we've got uh speaking of those newsstands from that era we've got amazing spider-man number 503 this is the first appearance of Tess Black, who is the daughter of Loki. And uh, in addition to that, it is, like I said, a newsstand. Really rare from this time period. Now, there was one listed on eBay. It was listed by Mile High Comics, who generally has higher than average prices. They had this listed at $48. I think that is way, way, way too high. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like a, normally like a 5 to $7 book. So maybe with the newsstand... Could be maybe double that. I'm, I'm not really sure. It's really tough to pin down the actual value of newsstands from this era because the sales just don't come up very often. So this is probably something I'll hold on to until someone else sells one, and you know that way I have a uh, you know a, a comp, a way to compare the prices. Um, next up, we've got Nomad number four. And this, this book is interesting. This is actually an early Deadpool cover appearance. I don't think he's in the book at all, but you can see he's on the card right there on the cover of this book. And, uh, you know, Deadpool was not a super utilized character at first. He didn't pick up steam and popularity until, I guess, it was probably late 90s, early 2000s. Um, 
and then especially when the movie came out, that's when Deadpool really gained a lot of mainstream prominence. Uh, but nonetheless, the uh, you know collectors of Deadpool, Deadpool fans, will collect a lot of the early appearances, not just the first, the second, the third, but also like these early cover appearances and stuff like that because of how popular the character is. Uh, moving on, we've got some Transformers stuff here. I'm just going to pop this stuff down. we got a couple Transformers books. Um, starting with issue number two, I was very surprised to see that in there. It's not in like super high grade or anything, but nonetheless, this is the second appearance of Optimus Prime, the second appearance of uh, Megatron, and uh, just the, you know, the second overall Transformers comic book. Uh, originally was, as you can see on the top, supposed to be a four-issue miniseries, but it was so good, uh, so popular that they decided to turn it into a... Um, ongoing series after that fourth issue they just kept com coming out with uh, with more and more um speaking of which we've got uh number three the third issue of the mini series um which uh, had a Spider-Man crossover, really awesome on the cover there as well. And then, of course, like I said, it broke free from that uh, that limited series um, designation and became its own run. Um, I think it spanned about 80-some issues, if I'm remembering correctly. And this one right here um, has a painted cover that is really popular. Um, this one actually sells for between $10 and $15, so I was very happy to pick that one up. Uh, a couple of minor keys in here as well. There was number 11, the first appearance of Jetfire. Um, there was number 24, which is the death of Optimus Prime. Really cool one there. Great cover. Um, number 29, the first appearance of the Scraplets and the Triple Changers. And, uh, oh, that was it. Yeah, that was it. There were a couple others, but uh, I ended up putting them back. I just grabbed the keys. I'm not a huge Transformers fan myself. Um, but there was, there was, there was plenty of Transformers there, stuff there that I was just like, you know what, someone else that really likes Transformers, they can grab this. You know, I just grabbed the ones that I specifically, uh, wanted to, to, to take home with me. Moving on to some DC now, that was enough of the Marvel stuff. We've got Catwoman number one from 1993. This is just such a cool cover. It's an embossed cover, three-dimensional. Um, you got to be careful with this one because you can't really press it because you, you kind of mess up that embossing. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, just a, a really great uh, Catwoman cover. And I think this, if I'm remembering correctly, this was the first ongoing uh, Catwoman series. She did have a mini series before this, but uh, first ongoing. Then we've got Tales of the Teen Titans number 55. Anything with Deathstroke and the Teen Titans, in my opinion, is collectible. Um, just because Deathstroke is, like, such a loved character um, that came out of this and, and such a popular character. Like, think about Teen Titans number two is just, like, by far the most expensive key in that run. First appearance of Deathstroke. So, um, you know, anything like cover appearances and stuff like that are great to pick up. And this one specifically has a really great cover in my opinion then we've got superman man of steel number one and this wouldn't be like that big of a deal or anything like that um you know pretty plentiful book out there but it is a news where is it it is a newsstand um which I, i've actually i don't think i've ever seen a newsstand of this book it was 91 that it came out i think uh yeah 91 so it wasn't you know, super rare, like a late 90s or early 2000s book, but it was still certainly uh, a smaller portion of the print run than, uh, you know, compared to the direct edition. Uh, moving on to some modern DC stuff, which there uh, there was a little bit of, and I actually, a friend pulled these out, uh, my buddy Alex, and um, asked if I wanted to grab them. And coincidentally, I have number one, two, and three, of this uh, deceased run with these zombie covers. I believe these were the, uh, oh, I forget who did the variant on this and I don't want to say it and be wrong. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the zombie variants of uh, deceased, I have one, two and three and guess what? They had four, they had five with Harley Quinn and they had six with dark side, meaning that I completed my run. These are going to stay in the personal collection for sure. Um, really like the, the art on the, this run. And now that I have the complete set, I definitely want to read it. Cause I, I never got around to, uh, to reading this, uh, this is, you know, DC's version of, of Marvel zombies, um, <laughs> which is what I like to call it right here. We got a reprint of Flash number one, the Golden Age Flash number one, Flash Comics number one. This is uh, you know, obviously a absolute grail of a book, but you know, 
a reprinted version, um, one that can be affordable. This is one of the Millennium reprints, which if you ever see these like kind of off-center DC books, they did a bunch of reprints, uh, you know, in in recent years of some of their biggest books uh, from the Golden and Silver Age. Then we've got Superman. Number 183. This is a uh, a Silver Age book. Unfortunately, it does have some tape holding the front cover together, but nonetheless, you know, for 50 cents, you know, it's a dollar bin book and 50% off. I'm only paying 50 cents. I had to grab this, even though it's double cover price of, of 25 cents. That's okay. Um, there were a couple other Silver Age DC books. None of them, I don't think any of them were really keys, but Adventure Comics uh, number... 337, again, from the Silver Age, 1960s, 339, um, 365, and uh, then Superboy, number 124. Uh, like I said, none of these are like super expensive books or anything like that, just some filler issues, and, the, you know, grade-wise, they're low to low mid grade nothing you know spectacular but for 50 cents how am i gonna pass up 12 centers of you know popular runs like uh adventure comics and, and superboy uh the last couple books from phantasm or rather the phantasm warehouse were indie books one of them being a silver age indie book we have uh zorro from gold key not zorro's first appearance or anything but i just thought that this cover was absolutely magnificent that red background really makes the character pop and uh you know zorro is definitely a character that i thought was really cool throughout the years uh, i think there was like a was a movie when i was a kid and i think they remade it i don't even i'm not even up to date on my zorro i'm gonna have to go check that out um, and last but not least, at least from uh, Phantasm, before I move on to some other stuff that I got at that flea market, uh, is Devil May Cry number one. Video games have been super popular, and there's been a big crossover in um, you know collectors between video games and comics. And I know a lot of people that specifically collect video game comics, both that are comic book people that are into video games as well, as well as people that are more video game fans and don't really buy comics other than specific video game comics because of the collectability crossover between uh, those two hobbies. So this is really cool. Um, this is the first appearance of Devil May Cry in comics. It's a three-issue limited series. I actually had gotten one in a collection a couple months back, uh, the, the full set, but this one is just number one by itself. Nonetheless, definitely great and worth picking up 50 for 50 cents. Moving on to that flea market I went to, I didn't have high expectations. I had never been to this flea market before. Um, you know, it looked pretty small, but I figured I'd try it out. There was one, well, there were a couple people that had comics, but it was mostly like 90s and early 2000s stuff and not nothing, nothing of, of value. A lot of the stuff was like really beat up, but there was one woman who had um, some silver and bronze stuff. It was priced extremely high. I'm talking like there was like a $40, 30, I think a $30 price tag on this book right here. It's definitely not worth that much, but it does have some value. Um, to put it into perspective, there was a Spider Woman 2 that had a $30 price tag as well in mid grade. That book might be $10 in high grade, $10 or $12. So. It, I, I'm not sure where she got her pricing. Um, she said that her, her daughter might have done it, um, but that she said they didn't really know anything about comics and I could make an offer. I told her it's about 50 books in the box. I don't want to be rude or anything, but I would really only pay about a dollar a book for them. She counted it out. It was 58 books. She asked if I could do $50. And I said, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll, t I'll take a chance. Uh, I didn't see anything that really popped out at me. This book kind of, but uh, not you know, nothing, nothing crazy with this. this is like a ten, fifteen dollar book. Um, yeah, probably fifteen. It's actually in pretty solid shape. Just an early um, appearance of of Nick Fury. This is Nick Fury and Howling Commandos number sixteen um, from the early nineteen sixties. I think this is probably sixty three or something like that. Uh, it's got a great cover. You know, it's got Nick Fury, uh, but nothing, nothing super special other than that. No key significance. Um, but there were some books that were keys that were in that box as well. Um, and there was a lot of Silver Age filler issues. I'm not going to bore you with all that stuff, but this one's pretty nice right here. Justice League of America, number 31. Again, an early 1960s book. And in fact, this is the issue where Hawkman, who's right on the cover, joins the Justice League. 
um, you know, for that reason, it is a, a pretty sought after key and high grade. It's a couple hundred dollars. This one, of course, not really high grade, probably still worth maybe 20 to $30. So between these two books, I'm getting close to the $50 I paid. Um, and there was, you know, plenty of silver age filler that's worth a couple bucks a piece, but wait a second, there was one more book that I pulled out that is actually a home run right here. This is Our Army at War number 151. This is the first appearance of Enemy Ace. Now, I don't, I'm not into war books at all. I did know that there were a couple books in this run that are worth something. First appearance of Sergeant Rock is in this run, as well as first appearance of Enemy Ace. But I, I didn't know what issue it was or what the cover looked like or anything like that, just because this is not my forte. I am more of a superhero and horror guy, um, you know, war and romance and, uh, you know, that that kind of those, those other genres, crime, not really my thing. Uh, so I don't know as much about it, but this right here in this condition which uh, it's you know kind of the lower side of mid grade maybe like a, a four four five pretty decent um this book sells for between a hundred and a hundred and fifty dollars i paid fifty dollars for the whole lot that this this woman had so i definitely did well um considering this book is worth double to triple what i paid for everything um you know not like a, a crazy come up but definitely one uh you know worth my time uh, driving down to this flea market and uh, walking around a little bit. And I always like going and looking at stuff. Um, you know, there's there's just some some cool things to check out at these flea markets, even if I don't necessarily buy them. And you know, every once in a while, I, I run into someone who's, uh, you know, a pretty interesting person that I get to chat with a little bit. That being said, um, this weekend, this coming weekend, uh, in fact, the 13th of August, specifically Saturday, August 13th, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. in Ambler, Pennsylvania, there will be Ambler Comic Con. It is the first year that they are hosting this event. And Ambler holds definitely a special place in my heart. It is the town in which I grew up. And, uh, you know, I spent tons of time there as a kid, skateboarding around town, grabbing pizza, all that stuff. So I'm very excited uh, to be, you know, not only attending this event, but uh, selling at this event. So if you're in the Philadelphia area, please come hang out at uh, Ambler Comic Con and uh, come say hi. I'm probably going to be doing a giveaway throughout the day. I haven't decided uh, what it's going to be yet. But uh, what it'll probably be is uh, if you show me you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, this YouTube channel, um, then you get an entry card to uh, whatever you know prize it is. Well, I, I haven't decided on a book yet. But nonetheless, if you have some time, come by, hang out, and uh, maybe grab some books from me or one of the other vendors. I'll be going live on Instagram during the day as well to do some cool stuff with that. So uh, yeah, if you're around come by. Uh, either way, please give this video a thumbs up on the way out and uh, definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know how you think I did on my weekend haul. I didn't have a lot of time to hunt for comics, but two quick stops ended up, in my opinion, being pretty great and uh, definitely look forward to uh, some more hunting in the coming weeks. Um, yeah, that, that, that's about it for me. So until next time, turn the page, wash your hands.